Outlook 2013 is primarily used for not only sending and receiving emails, but also for organizing those emails, scheduling events, making appointments, creating tasks and tracking them, and creating and working with contacts. You can see here on my desktop, I've got my shortcut to the Outlook 2013 program that when I hover over it, you can see in the pop-up, it says manage your email, schedules, contacts, and to-dos. I also have the shortcut down below on my taskbar that just requires a single click to open it up. Well, it doesn't matter as long as you can open up Outlook 2013, but having said that, if this is the first time you'll be opening it up after you installed it, then it's going to ask you if you want to configure an email account. In other words, to input settings you receive from your internet service provider so you can send and receive email through Outlook. So if you don't have those settings, you can go ahead and check with them, call them, find out exactly what it is so you can set it up through Outlook, or you can just see what I do, and then give that information, relay it to them, what you need in order to set this up. Let's double click to open it up so I can show you. On the very first screen, or the one that's before this one, it's not going to show it here because I already have an Outlook account that I set up, and so I'm just going to go to the second step. So the first screen before this one is going to ask you if you want to configure an email account. If you say yes and you click next down below, it takes you to this screen. If you say no and you click next or finish, then it'll open up Outlook, but you won't be able to send and receive emails. So assuming that you clicked yes, let's go ahead and come here and go down to the bottom and do a manual setup or additional server types and click next. And then depending upon how you're setting up your email account here, if you're connected to an exchange server or compatible service or outlook.com, or just doing something that's very basic as far as emails go and not having exchange servers here, then go ahead and select POP or IMAP and click Next. And this is pretty simple as far as entering in the information that you just need to get from your internet service provider. Like if it's Yahoo, then either go to their web page and set it up or contact support. They should have instructions there. So type in your name for this email account. It's me, Kurt Kershaw. And then your email address that, let's say we got from Yahoo, so it's kurt at yahoo.com. And then down below I find rarely do I have to change the account type to IMAP, so I leave it at POP3. Of course, your internet service provider is going to have all that information. Like they'll have two servers, or they may have one. One for the incoming mail that everybody sends to you, that they hold in store until you connect through Outlook to be able to download it to your Outlook program on your computer. And then another server, or again the same server, that when you send something out, it sits on that server until it gets delivered to somebody else's email account or to their server, and then to their email account that they have set up on their computer or that they log in through the internet. And so we'll keep it simple. I'm just making this up as I go, but I've seen email accounts that are somewhat like this. And then down below for the username, if the username is that, leave it as is. If it's the actual email address for the username to log in, then some email accounts will say at, some will say plus in replace of at. Again, your internet service provider will have all that information. Then type in your password. I'm just making this up. I mean the password, not the steps here. This is what you'll basically need to input. And then we need to do a little bit more for the settings. So when you're done with that, come over here and click more settings. You can see you've got your mail account here, kurt at yahoo.com. Just duplicated it over from the email address here. Then your outgoing server, check with your ISP or internet service provider if your outgoing server requires authentication. If so, check it. And if it needs more information, then find out from them. Then the advanced tab, the incoming server, the default is 110. If it's some other number, then type it in. The outgoing, type it in. And then anything else that you need. And then down below, if you want to leave a copy of the message on the server, and if you don't want copies on the server, because, you know, who knows, with these days, you got people breaking into servers. So for me, I don't want to leave anything out there that I'd like anybody else to see. So probably not a copy on the server. But then again, if you want it as a backup and you trust the server, go for it. And then, of course, it'll remove it from the server after so many days. In any case, when you're done, go ahead and click Okie Dokie. And then you can test the account settings. When you click test, it's going to check. Well, you'll see here, it'll log in. And if there is an actual email address that you have, which I don't, and also the correct password, it will check it off. If it doesn't check off, then it'll sit here and try to figure out what the heck you're doing and eventually put a red X there going, um, I can't log in because you don't have your information correct. And there it is, a red X. So it couldn't log in to incoming mail. And then it's trying to send a test message to see if the outgoing server is correct. And if not, then you'll get a red X there, in which case, oh, fudge. 
we just go ahead and click stop, close out, and realize that we need to reconfigure the information here or on more settings. Once that's done, before you click next, you'll have a data file to store these email messages and also all the other data that you could be using with the other items in Outlook, like making appointments, creating tasks, and creating contacts. It'll store it in the data file. So if this is the first time, leave it as new, and it will store it in your documents folder. Where is that documents folder? You just have to open up your computer, and depending upon what version of Windows you have, 7, 8, 10, you just need to open up basically a folder, like exercises folder, double click, and then come over here in the navigation pane, and if you have libraries, go ahead and click on that, because over to the right you'll have the documents folder, double click on that, and then there's the Outlook files, double click on that, and you've got your Hey, Outlook files, that's where the data file is stored that contains all the information that you store in Outlook, like emails that come in, it sits in that file here. Also, when you create contacts, tasks, appointments, it stores it there. So it's probably good that you know that in case if you want to be able to back up your file here. So if Outlook crashes or accidentally gets destroyed in your computer, if you have this PST file, well, if you can't see the extension, then watch my Windows training video on extensions because it has the name of it, then it has a .pst, that's the extension. And in any case, you can go ahead and take that and maybe burn it to a disk or copy it over to a thumb drive, someplace that's secure that nobody else has access to. In any case, it's right there. And there's the address. In fact, you can click on the folder there, and it goes from the C drive to the users. I'm logged in as training, and right after that's the documents. So if I go ahead and delete that and hit Enter, it takes me to the documents here, and again, it's the Outlook Files folder. Double click, it's right there. That may be a little bit too much for level one, but go ahead and rewind this and play it over and over again, or slow the video down. Let's go ahead and close out of that. So, once we have that set up, if it's new the first time, go ahead and do it that way. If you already have a data file from a previous version of Outlook and you don't want to create a second one, then go ahead and select Existing, click Browse. Hey, it takes you right to the Documents folder. Go ahead and select it, and then click OK. So you've got your old emails in that PST file, the data file for Outlook, and when you set this up with a new email account, Kurt at Yahoo.com, when you receive incoming email, it'll store it in the same file, and not like when I click Browse, a new one like Outlook 1 or Outlook 2 or Outlook 3, all these new PST files. You can see down below, PST. Psst. Let's go ahead and click Cancel. Oops, you better go back to New Outlook Data File because I haven't selected one here. And then before you click Next, by default, it's automatically going to test the account. Same as clicking on this. So if you uncheck it, it won't test it. We don't have to go through that testing again because we know this information that I gave is false. And if you don't, well, I said so. And then click Next. And then you're all set. Click Finish, and then you're done. Boom, it opens up Outlook and automatically does a send and receive. I don't know if you want to rewind the video here, but it did a little bar down below in the status bar showing that it's checking the server to see if there's anything out there to bring in as far as the email goes. Now, if you're looking at this and going, what are you talking about? I've never seen Outlook before. That's okay. Next training video, I'm going to give you an overview starting from the top here and go from left to right and keep coming down until we hit the bottom down below the status bar, as I just mentioned. One caveat to this, if you accidentally, when you're opening up Outlook for the first time, you selected no, because when you open it up again, it's not going to give you that same option saying, okay, do you want to configure an email account? You're like, oh man, how do I do this now? Simple. If you said no, and you don't get an inbox here because you didn't configure an email account, so you don't get any place to receive email, come up here, click on the file tab. This is what they call backstage. We go behind the scenes, and then info selected by default, just come over here and go down to account settings. Click on it and go down to account settings and it opens up the window. The first tab here is email. Go ahead and click on new. Hey, we get the same window, don't we? That's fun. Let's go ahead and select manual setup or additional server types. Click next. And then we selected pop or IMAP. But of course, if you have an exchange, go ahead and select one of those. Click next. And then go ahead and type in everything here that you get from your internet service provider. Click finish. And then when you're done, let's click cancel, close out. You'll get your inbox. But I digress. We'll cover all this in the next training video in the overview.